everybody. So uh, let's move on and talk about uh, logical equivalence. Up until this point, if you look back at least in our work in chapter two, what we've done is we've shown how you can take simple statements and combine them together using logical operations to make more complicated statements, and then use truth tables to work out under what conditions these more complicated statements are true, depending on the simpler statements, truth or falsehood. So we looked at and and or and if then and if and only if. And each of those are ways to take, other, take simpler statements and combine them into bigger and bigger and bigger statements. Um, sometimes you, you can do this in different ways and get the same result. And um, so logical equivalence is a situation in which you have taken some simpler statements and combined them together, possibly in different ways, and ended up with two things which really mean exactly the same thing. So basically, two statements are logically equivalent if their um, truth and falsehood is the same. They're either both true or both false under exactly the same conditions. So um, let's look at this a little more closely and uh, look at some examples. So uh, the book uses slightly different language, but for the purposes of this talk, I'm going to use this definition. So if we have two statements, we'll call them P and Q. They're called logically equivalent if the combined statement P if and only if Q is always true. Here's one sort of really simple example. Any statement is logically equivalent to itself. P is always logically equivalent to P because if you make the truth table for that, here's P, it can be true or false, and here's P again, and it can be true or false. And if you look at P if and only if P, remember P if and only if P is true exactly when the two parts are either both true or both false. So in this case, P if and only if P is always true, and so P is logically equivalent to itself. It's kind of a dumb example, but something to sort of start with. Now let's look at um, another more interesting example. And here um, I'm going to take two statements which use the variables P implies Q. So the, the P and Q in this thing right here are not the two statements P and Q. Instead, the P is this statement, P implies Q, and the Q is this statement, Q or not P. And what I'm claiming is that these two things are logically equivalent. And we're going to verify that by looking at the truth table for the first statement, if and only if the second statement. And uh, we should be pretty good at truth tables by now. This is a relatively simple one because there's only two possibilities for P and Q. So there's only four combinations of false and true. And now we have to write down P implies Q which we know is false in only one situation. It's false only when P is true and Q is false. And let's look at not P, just to uh, make our life a little bit easier. So not P is false when P is true and true when P is false. And here's not P or Q. So that's true unless they're both false. So here Q is true, so this is true. Here they're both false, so it's false. Here, Q is true and P is true, so it's true. And here, um, sorry, here not P is true, so it's true. And now when we do P implies Q if and only if not P or Q, remember we have to look in these two columns, this column here and this column here, and the logical equivalence is the if and only if is true if they're both the same. So here it's TT, so this is T. Here it's FF, so that's T. And the other two are TT. So you see that P implies Q if and only if not P or Q um, is always true. And sometimes, uh, and in the book in particular, 
the book will write equals instead of um, what maybe might have been a better notation, which is to use the if and only if symbol. Equals meaning that the two statements are either true together or false together. In fact, it might be a little bit easier to think about logical equivalence if you prefer it. You can use the book's definition that two statements, if you have two statements made up out of other statements, they're logically equivalent if they have exactly the same truth table. So to go back to my example here, P implies Q, or if P then Q, the truth table has an F just in the place where it's TF and it's T otherwise. And the same thing for not P or Q. It's either true, 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 and the only place it has an F is in the same place. So P implies Q and not P or Q have the same truth table. It's interesting to think about this because it means in some ways that we don't need if then. We could just whenever we say if then, if I say if you get an A on the final, you will pass the course. Is the same thing as saying either you will, so remember this is P, you will get an A on the final, or Q, you will pass the course, is you will not get an A on the final, or you will pass the course. So if you remember, the question is, when is this statement true? Well, this statement is true if, if it's not a lie. In other words, if it's really true that you, when you get an A on the final, you'll pass the course. If you don't get an A on the final, there's no guarantee is there. And the second statement says that one or the other of these things or both is true. So the only, way this, the only way the first one can be a lie, the only way it can be a lie is if you get an A, but you don't pass. That's the only way it can be a lie. And the, how can the second one be a lie? Well, the only way the second one is going to be false is if both of the two terms are false, because an or is going to be true if either one of them is true. And the only way that can happen is if this is false, which means you get an A, and this is false, you don't pass. So you see there, the only way these two statements are respectively lies is the same. So they carry the same information so they're logically equivalent. Although in spoken English, we wouldn't, maybe we wouldn't treat these things quite in the same way. From a logical point of view, they are identical. Um, some of you may be taking some computer science courses or even be computer science majors. And um, if you think about what we've been doing here, we have a kind of an algebra uh, where we have the variables are like statements. I mean, they aren't like statements, they are statements. And the operations are and, or, not, plus other operations like. And um, we can build up more complicated statements, almost like algebra, right? We can say P or R and Q and not S. And there is an, this is a kind of an algebra, it's called Boolean algebra. And it's really fundamental to uh, working with um, computers and, and actually if you wanted to go farther in logic. So um, in this kind of Boolean algebra, the, the equal sign is, is this logical equivalence. So two of these things, two statements like this are equal if they're logically equivalent. Um, we're not going to pursue this, but it, just in case you might have seen this in another course, I thought it would be worth mentioning. There are a few particular examples of logical equivalents which come up all the time, and in fact, some of them even have names. So uh, 
the, there's two statements here which tell you how not behaves with and and or. So that they're called De Morgan's laws. So the first one says that not P and Q equals not P or not Q. Is this true? Well, to test it, we have to look at the truth tables. And if you like to think about this as an algebraic case, this is like P and Q are variables which can only be true or false. They only can take one of two values. And we want to know whether these two formulas are the same no matter what values you put in for P and Q. Just like to say that you have an equation in algebra is an equality if the two sides of the equation are equal no matter what value of the variables you put in. So the only values you have for the variables here are T and F. So if we look at P and Q, it's true, false, false, false. So if we look at not P and Q, it becomes false, true, true, true. If we look at not P, it's false, false, true, true, because I'm reversing the uh, first column. And if I look at not Q, it's false, true, false, true, because I'm reversing the second column. And then if I look at not P or not Q, I'm taking an or of these two columns. So false, false is false, and it's true in every other case because it's an or. And if we compare these two columns, you see that they're identical. So if we put an if and only if here between, instead of the equals of it, then we would have a true in every place because remember, if and only if is true when the two variables are the same. So it's F, F is true, true, true is true, true, true is true, true, true is true. So the if and only if column would have all T's or equivalently, it's enough that the two columns are the same and they are. I won't do the second one, but it's very similar. Um, what it says is that not P or Q is the same as not P and not Q. So this is kind of like a distributive law not distributes over and and or, but it changes the or into an and and the and into an or. Those are called De Morgan's laws. A really important equivalence, which does come up in um, sort of everyday language, is called the contrapositive. So the left-hand side of the contrapositive is the statement, if P, then Q. And what this says is that's equal to, if not Q, then not P. So remember, we talked a bit about the converse. The converse of a statement is, if you have P implies Q, the converse is Q implies P. And these are not equivalent. Because remember, this one is, the left-hand side is false if P is true and Q is false, whereas the right-hand side is false if Q is true and P is false. And that's different. So you can't just reverse an implication sign, but you can reverse it if you put nots in place. And um, so let's first look at the truth tables just to make sure we believe this. So here's P and Q. Here's P implies Q. Here's not Q, not P. And here's not Q implies not P. So we have true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. And remember, this is true, false, true, true. Not Q is false, true, false, true. Not P is false, false, true, true. And now, remember that not Q implies not P is true if not Q is false. And it's true if they're both true, and it's only false in this case. 
And again, if you compare these two columns, you see that they're the same. What is this in English? Well, if I say, if it is raining, then it is cloudy. Suppose this is true, or we don't even need to suppose it's true. It's an implication. The co contrapositive is, if it is not cloudy, then it is not raining. And these two statements are equivalent to one another. The first one says, raining forces it to be cloudy. Not raining says nothing about whether it's cloudy. The second one says, not cloudy prohibits it from raining, but cloudy, if it is cloudy, then it might or might not be raining. And those are the two, those two things are equivalent. If 20 years from now, after you've taken this course and it's passed far into your memory, and you remember basically nothing about it except vaguely that you took some course that had some logic in it in college, the one thing I would ask you to remember is the difference between the converse of a statement and the contrapositive. Because the converse is not equivalent to an implication, it's the contrapositive that is. And the number of times that you will hear people in speeches saying, if you vote for me, then I will bring an airport to this town. Uh, the, contra the converse of that is, if I bring an airport to this town, then you will vote for me. That's not the same thing. What is the same thing is the contrapositive, which is, if I don't bring an airport to this town, then you shouldn't vote for me. Okay, maybe I'm stretching that a little bit. But nevertheless, I, I do think that this is by far the most common logical fallacy, and um, it's important to keep it in mind. Okay, let's do one more uh, logical equivalence, which is in the spirit of Boolean algebra, or two more, I guess. The first is uh, to look at an associative law. So we've kind of been taking this for granted, but in fact, we should really check it out. If I write down, I mean, remember the, this uh, is an and. It's like a set intersection. If I write P and Q and R, or P and Q and R, it's not automatically obvious that these things are the same. But in fact, they're equivalent. And to check it, you would have to make the full eight row table like this. and then compute these two things separately. So here you would do Q and R, just looking at the last two columns, this is um, uh, gonna be, maybe I'll just, let's, let's do the, the two pieces separately, Q and R, P and Q. So Q and R is true, false, 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 true, false, false, false. And P and Q is true, true, false, 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 false. And now if I do um, P and Q and R, it's gonna be true, and then everything else is, uh, is gonna be false because these are all false. And the other one, P and Q and R, well, it's going to be true here, but um, everywhere else here is these are all false, and the only place it's true is here, here at this point, but P is false at that point. So again, it's true, and then, then all falses. So the only way P and Q and R can be true is when you would expect, if all three statements are true. If even one of them is false, then it's false. And what we've checked now is that it doesn't matter whether you first figure out P, Q and R, and then do P and that, 
or whether you do P and Q and then do and R. So that's an associative law. And there's a similar associative law for or. You could do P or Q or R, and that's equal to P or Q or R. We tend to take this for granted. This is going to be false if all three of them are false. If even one of them is true, then it's going to be true. And similarly, the other side is going to be false if all three of them are false, and otherwise it's going to be true. And then finally, we have distributive laws. And um, what, if you look, why is it called a distributive law? Well, this is, if you think of just for the moment, think about this as like times and this is like plus. So then what you're doing here is you're saying P times Q plus R. It's not really times, but just to show you that it looks like a di uh, distributive law. It's P times Q plus P times R. And that's the way the distributive law works in, um, I'm going to put quotes around this because it isn't really what it is, but that's the way the distributive law works. So this, um, that indicates why you would uh, think of this as a distributive law. To verify it, you would have to look at the truth tables. Um, P, Q, R, true, 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 false, true, false, true, true, false, 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 true, true, false, true, false, 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 true, false, false, false. We can do Q or R is true, 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 false, true, 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 false. So now we can do P and Q or R is true, 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 false, 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 because where P is false, this is automatically false, and where Q or R is false, it's automatically false. So that covers those cases. And on the other side, we have to look at P and Q and P and R. So P and Q, this is true, true, false, 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 and P and R, this is true, false, true, false, 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 false. And then finally, we have to combine those with an or. And that's going to be true, true, because remember, you only need one of these two to be true for the or to be true, true, and then the rest are false. And if we combine these two columns, or compare these two columns, you see that, again, they're identical. So if you, uh, to use the fancier definition of logical equivalence, if you took, an, if you replace this equals here by if and only if, you'd be computing one more column with an if and only if, and since whenever there's a T here, there's a T here, and whenever there's an F here, there's an F here, you would get all, all T's down this column, and that's the other way of saying that they're logically equivalent. So um, the other distributive law says that P or Q and R is P or Q and P or R. Whoops. That's also true. So um, unlike in, I mean, in, in arithmetic, uh, addition doesn't distribute over multiplication. Multiplication distributes over addition. Here, and distributes over or, and or distributes over and. Uh, so it's a little bit simpler. And I think that covers all of the cases. So um, this kind of algebra, this Boolean algebra, uh, allows you to figure out which these two things are equal because no matter what truth or falsehood you associate to P, Q, or R, you get the same result from both sides. Just like in algebra, two equations are the same if they give the same value for every choice of variables.